here's a HL822 Leslie built in about 1978 some of the Leslie parts there's the 15 inch bottom speaker it's got a nice heavy magnet on it and there's the top motor it's a two-speed motor there's the o-ring in there it's one of the things that you have to change you have to split this apart and oil up both motors and there's this two-speed motor for the bottom it's got a different kind of pulley on it it's got three grommets that hold it in for suspension and this H22 has got a couple tone features on the side one for the upper one for the lower makes it a little bit brighter and as you can see some schmuck was trying to sell this for almost a thousand bucks and this is the uh, rotosonic drum as you can see it's got a special covering on it and and closed is a six by nine speaker this thing actually spins around the whole drum does uh, if you look inside the hole you can see a great big metal plate with some washers using that as a counterweight so this thing's pretty finely balanced and aerodynamic there's three mids in this there's one there's a second one and there's a third one tucked up in there beside the motor box and all three of these speakers are driven by a 65 watt amp and here's all the crossovers so the inside of this cabinet it's pretty much gutted right now I just got the electronics in the bottom here and uh, here's something that everybody gets fooled by when they buy a Leslie you know when you buy a Leslie for cheap and bring it home and expect to plug something in well there's a few things you got to do first this particular Leslie uses an 11 pin socket and you need a matching 11 pin cable that would match up to uh, a particular Hammond organ which would also have this 11 pin connector which controls uh, your Leslie speeds and there's the power supply it's a pretty beefy unit nice big caps a big transformer and here's the amplifier section and what it is there's four amplifiers here there's one you see the transformers uh, two of them are 40 watts and two of them are approximately 65 watts uh, the 65 watt feeds these three speakers here for your mids and uh, the other 65 watts drives this great big 15 which sits right here and points down and the drum will sit right here and as I reassemble this uh, you'll see it coming back together and you'll kind of see what I mean uh, it's kind of a real engineering marvel these things uh, so uh, 65 watts go to those three speakers 65 watts to the 15 inch sub and then 40 watts goes to the bottom rotor and 40 watts goes to this top driver one of the nice things about uh, a lot of the parts that Don Leslie used on these uh, cabinets a lot of them are available from uh, a bearing supply shop uh, locally we got boss bearings here's the uh, bearings I picked up uh, today they were uh, came out to twelve dollars cash for four of them uh, and these particular ones are Nachi 6200 series so very important in these uh, two-speed motors here's the spindle right there that rubs on this o-ring you can see right there 
they're available uh, just about anywhere as well uh, and like I mentioned earlier these uh, motors you have to split them apart so you can lubricate them properly uh, this is the top motor assembly you can tell because there's the uh, three grooves important thing to know about these rotosonic drums is they're uh, more for th theatrical sounds and uh, they're not as uh, widely collected as the uh, normal Leslie drums. What we're going to do is get the shaft to go through two rubber grommets and then sit into one more rubber grommet down at the bottom where that 6200 series bearing uh, sits that I changed to a 7200 series. Uh, we're going to see how that works out. Might be, uh, might be the cat's banana, you never know. And here's the Merco tack assembly. You can see the finely machined split in the bottom of the shaft. Some pretty precise engineering here. And here's a close up of the top motor. You can see the three speed pulley on it. There's the high speed motor, and there's the low speed motor. And that's basically what it looks like when it's all taken apart. Here's a nice close up view of the uh, top motor half assembly and its bearing. It's a uh, plain friction bearing, oil impregnated bronze, commonly known as uh, oil light. If we look at the bottom of it, you can see the uh, felt ring there that acts as a oil wick for the uh, for the oil light bushing. Actually, it's a little oil reservoir. What's interesting about this bearing is that it's actually spherical. It sits in a spherical housing, so it allows for lots of offset compensation. You can see just how much. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean all the parts up, uh, get the commutator looking good, and uh, impregnate the uh, bronze bushings with some oil. A little bit of good old 3-in-1. And let's start putting the low speed motor back together. Let's drop the nylon bushing back on. And we can drop the top half of the housing on. Everything spins free. Let's put the bolts back together and cinch it up. Now let's mount the low speed motor to its housing. Don't forget to put all your washers back in. Here's the speed reduction pulley. It's got an o-ring on it. You can purchase these at any bearing supply shop for about 75 cents or a dollar. It's a pretty unique system in that the uh, low speed pinion drives against the O-ring, like so. Here's a quick explanation on how these two speed motors work. When electricity is introduced to the low speed motor, it engages into the low speed pulley which in turn drives the belt at a low speed. When electricity is introduced to the high speed motor this motor this commutator drops out of place and the high speed motor takes over. 